Hi, my name is Naomi Shah. I am 16 years old and I'm from Portland, Oregon. So the first question was, how did you feel when you found out that you were a finalist for the Google Science Fair? And I was ecstatic. Um, this is kind of embarrassing, but when I first found out, I looked it up online really quickly. That was the first thing I did when I came home from school. And I literally couldn't stop dancing around the house for about 15 minutes. Um, my brother makes fun of me for that still, which is kind of embarrassing. But um, that's the truth. And I didn't expect to make it to the semi-finalist level, let alone the finalist level. And then winning at the Google Science Fair was something that was really amazing for me. It was a great experience. And I haven't gotten off the adrenaline rush yet three days later. Um, the next question was, what do you want to do when you grow up? That's a really good question. Um, so this project was kind of at the intersection um, of environmental health. And that's really what I'm passionate about and what I hope to do in the future. Um, now, environmental health, it combines environment with human health. But I also want to be able to implement my science research in terms of policy, economics, business, and even um, engineering. And um, I hope to do the basic science research and then also implement my results in the real world and affect uh, real people. Um, especially the millions of people who suffer from different disorders that can be eliminated by um, working to fix the environment. Um, what inspires me? That's a really good question. Um, in terms of people, there's a huge range of people that inspire me. My teachers, my classmates, my fellow science fair finalists. Um, but the one thing that started when I was younger was when my parents. Um, I had a passion for science when I was two or three years old because they took me to the science fair, the science museum um, as a child and they let me experiment with flubber even though my mom hated the flubber room she used to sit there and watch me play again and again and make the same different shapes over and over um, my brother who is currently a sophomore at the university of southern california he's always kind of been there for advice and encouragement pushed me even when i felt like I needed to give up for a while, he pushed me farther and said that this is what's good for you, which is really cool. He's only two years older than me, so we have a lot in common. Um, in terms of um, scientists, I have so many. Um, at the fair I met um, Dean Kamen and Vin Cerf, and these are people who have um, inspired me over the years, um, and seeing them in person was something that was so motivational for me. I was able to talk to them, bounce my ideas off of theirs, learn about their research and their innovation, and it kind of got my brain juices flowing as to what I want to do in the future as well. Um, let's see. Have you faced any judgment while doing this project because you are a young girl? Um, as a young girl, I think that one of the challenges that I face, or as a young researcher in general, is um, the fact that maybe, maybe many people don't take you seriously. Um, and they might not think that you're able to do this research or able to take it to the next level or implement it. And um, the biggest thing that, um, the Im biggest implication of my research was when after all my results and my modeling and all my results were um, gathered, I wrote a letter to President Obama and EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson discussing the possible amendment of our government's Clean Air Act to include volatile organic compounds as a criteria air pollutant because right now it is not. And um, I haven't received a response yet, but I am taking action locally and I hope to continue implement my project, implementing my project at the national level and hope to receive a response soon. Um, and I haven't given up hope despite what many people think that young researchers may not be as credible in the, science, in the scientific community. Um, there's definitely credibility if you're passionate about it, and if you do the research and you do the, um, and you do, I guess, all the data collection, um, and you do statistical analyses, um, you can't be proven wrong, even if you are a young researcher or a young girl. Um, what do you do in your spare time? So there's a lot of things I do. Um, one of the biggest things I enjoy doing is spending time with my friends and family. I think that even though um, science is just a huge part of my life, the other part is definitely bonding with my family, bonding with my friends. Um, and we do a lot of outdoor activities. Portland, Oregon in general is a pretty outdoorsy place. Um, I also love reading. I love building things out of Legos, um, which has been something I did with my brother even when we were, when we were younger. Um, there's so many things I like to do. Um, even just like the normal things that normal teenagers like to do. I like watching movies, I like going shopping, um, and that's all, that's also a huge part of my life. 
Um, and when I'm doing my science research, I focus on that. And when I'm like, you know, hanging out with my friends, I focus on that. So I really compartmentalize my life so that um, when I'm doing something, I really focus on that and give it all of my energy at that time. Um, how did you come up with the idea for your project? So really the way that I came up um, with the idea for my project, it was done from a kind of personal reason. Um, my great-grandfather had lung cancer, my grandfather had chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, or COPD, and my grandfather, or my dad, now has cancer. So it kind of shows like the genetic progression, and the next generation is my generation. And there's this saying where it's, genetic loads the gun, but the environment pulls the trigger. And I really wanted to do something to eradicate all of these, all of these disorders from the root. And asthma affects 300 million people worldwide. And I wanted to be the one to like, not just fix the problem by coming up with new drugs, looking at drug treatment, inhaler treatment, and steroids. I wanted to be the one to eradicate the disorder by cleaning up the air quality. And the biggest component of that is indoor air quality because that's where people spend 90% of their lives. Um, what three things could you not live without? That's a really good question. Um, I definitely say a laptop because I use that for pretty much everything, be it social networking on Facebook or um, researching, background research, or sending out emails to my teachers. Um, I use it for everything, um, even just for free time when I want to research something I'm interested in or if I want to look up something. So definitely a laptop. Hmm. Another thing I couldn't live without. Well, um, it's not really a thing, but it's kind of unit, my family unit. Um, they've always been there for me. They've been there to support me. Um, even though my parents aren't scientists, they've noticed my passion for science, and they've encouraged me to um, continue in whatever I'm interested in instead of pushing me in one direction or the other. And finally, I would say... Hmm... I'll think about a third one, and I will get back to you. Um, what's the most fascinating thing you've learned while researching for your project? I would definitely say um, I didn't know a lot about lung health before I started researching, and learning how much of an impact these pollutants have on the lung health of asthmatic patients has been eye-opening, because uh, a lot of people in my family are asthmatic, and when we moved from our old house to our new house, I made sure that my parents did everything right in terms of less carpeting, um, having an advanced um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, using less chemical pollutants and building materials, etc. And the difference in my family, personally, from the old house to the new, ha new house has been substantial in terms of symptoms like wheezing, coughing, breathlessness. So just seeing that for myself and seeing that in all of my test subjects really um, was inspirational and it really made me want to continue my research. Um, what would you tell girls who have big goals to make a difference in the world? Well, I would say don't let anything anyone says bring you down because if you are passionate about a subject, it will show no matter um, how long it takes. If it takes you a year to complete research, if it takes you five years to complete research, at the end it will always pay off and make a difference in the world if you're passionate about it. So um, just keep working at whatever you're working on. It doesn't even have to be science related. It could be if you're interested in art, go out and do the best you can do in art. If you're interested in music, do the best you can do in music. And then once you reach your limits, it's always good to find a mentor or someone that you can work with to even excel and push past your limits. Um, and that's what I hope to do in the future, just um, as I did at the Google Science for just networking with all these high-level scientists. I got a lot of ideas and I hope to um, implement them in the future in my research as well. Well, um, so those were the questions, um, and I'd love to answer more if you guys have any questions. Please feel free to contact me at any time. Um, I'd love to talk with anyone. Um, well, thank you for listening, and see you later.